Hi, and welcome to this episode of Encountering Jesus. My name is Cindy Johnston, and I am your host. You are listening to my video podcast series based on the Gospel of John. If you'd like more information about these podcasts and other series and books I have available, you can go to my website, heavensdoor41.com. Now we just got through talking about John the Baptist in John 1, 9 through 13. And now I would like to read from John 1, 14 through 18. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace, in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. I think we could camp out on these few scriptures for years. They are so loaded. And what I've been doing with this time of teaching is I have been going to my Bible and reading the next section of Scripture and if something bubbles up then I think okay I'm ready for the next podcast and so I read that and nothing came to me and I said okay well I it was uh, I, I cry anytime I read about Jesus and the magnificence of what he has done and who he is and you know just being God with God the Father and then coming and doing this to save the world just blows your mind and so I I just thought okay I'm done I had I had my little moment of um, reading scripture this morning and there it is and then it came to me about God the Father and Jesus and you know sometimes we get what I would call reflections, uh, perceptions, um, insight. And because of these times with him in the heavens that I spend in the spirit, you know, again, I can't stress enough that we are citizens of heaven and we should experience God and Jesus and Holy Spirit where we live. That is where, you know, we are seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. I can't think right off. I think that's Ephesians. But at any rate, I have these times. And I have been given a whole lot of information about God the Father, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit. And it's so funny because I have had different church backgrounds. 100% I am not theologian I am not a scholar I I do not at all I am uh, actually I'm very simple and uh, I do have these conversations with a friend who is and it's almost like a cat playing with a mouse I mean he just runs around but you know because he's mentally just all over the place and I just know things. I get him going because I know things because I experience them in heaven. And so he thinks I'm smart. (laughs) That's so funny is he thinks I'm smart for a moment because I saw something in a revelation and then he like unloads what he knows about that mentally. And, um, and it's, it's really quite 
uh, his wife stepped in one day <laughs> and said, hey, whoa, because <laughs> she could see the cat mouse situation. Um, but at any rate, I just know what I experience. And so I'm going to dive off for just a minute in what I have experienced. One of the things that has happened when I come into my heavenly place is I will experience things that are symbolic. And I was given a sword and it has three diamonds. They're all um, layered on top of each other. And the, the one at the base is the bigger diamond and then the second one's on top of it and then the other one's on top of that. And so when I've done, uh, I have had battles that I've went with with Jesus and I use my three diamond sword. And one day I understood that the three diamond sword, which is one sword, all layered together, was a reflection of me gaining a lot of these revelations of where I've seen how the Father loves the Son, that they are separate, and it is uh, very moving. There is a painting, and I want to say it was, uh, and I can't remember his whole name because it's a foreign name, but Kim is in part of it. I will try to find a way to um, let you know more of that name. So if you want to go look at that painting, it absolutely is so adoring because the father is kissing the son's head and the son is sitting there and it is so sweet. And when I saw it, I knew, I knew it was a reflection of this beautiful relationship. And they are a father and a son, but they were, they were fused as one. And I can't even explain that to you without you going, what in the world? We were all fused together. We were there with them when they began all this. When they, when, you know, when they spoke, when Jesus spoke it all into effect, we were all there because it says it before the foundations of the earth were laid. I knew you. So we have all been a part of it. And I want you to know it was a three diamond sword, not a three triangled sword. So we're included because there was four points to each diamond. And there was always that inclusion of us to be with them. It was always that way. And Jesus came. That's the part he came. He came. He was with the Father totally and completely connected in every way. And then he came apart to become human and take his place as the son, the firstborn, who would now do everything to right all that went wrong. And um, just know that that father-son relationship goes both ways. And Jesus loves his father with all his heart. And everything he does is to bring his father glory and to keep that relationship absolutely pristine and solid. He makes his choices and they both are dedicated to the very best of everything. They do everything out of love. There's never any selfish designs. It's all pure love. It is the most beautiful, uh, precious relationship to see and they're dedicated, their hearts are dedicated 100% to each other. And, um, and, and now we get to join as Jesus has made a way. So I'm just going to end with prayer as you, <laughs> as you ponder that. And uh, Jesus, I just thank you that you have purposed that we would be a part of everything that was laid at the beginning of the, the, of the foundation of the earth, that you had a purpose and a plan for us. That's the earth was set aside, that you had a purpose and a plan for us, and that we were not forgotten, and that you were making a way when you came and died for us, and you kept that human body. You still kept it. It's glorified, but you kept it. 
because you wanted us to see that you were connecting with who we are and you're making a way you are the way you're the way the truth and the life no one knows the father except through you and you have done it and we just give you all glory for it you're so worthy you're so worthy of everything because you're the most magnificent person I have ever known and I thank you so much for every person listening to this that their heart would be moved to know who you really are that you would begin to draw them even closer in Jesus name Amen okay I will talk to you again soon bye now